Today is a great day for Create, because today we finally start working on our clockwork steampunk city. Don't get me wrong, Liara has been already working around here and has already built a cheesecake factory, which I've been low-key poaching, because I've been also feeding it bone meal to speed up the cheesecake production. But as far as the eye can see, you will not spot a single proper building so far. Which is quite lucky, because that means today we're solving two problems at once. For one, we'll finally break ground on building something around here, and for two, it, it's a little embarrassing to admit two episodes in, but uh, your boy is homeless. I've been living out of this backpack and surviving on stolen cheesecake this entire time. It's about time we actually did something about it. Which, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. Cheesecake turns out provides speed effect when you eat it, so the low situation for it is actually very much outweighed by the fact that I get zoomies whenever I eat it. So, my friends, I fought long and hard about exactly what is it I want to do for the city's first building. It would make sense to put together some sort of a town hall, but I really wanted to make something more functional and more interesting, and something that I could personally use as my own home. And that's when I came up with this sketch here. This is Crafter's Respite. Functionally a duplex where the ground level is entirely overtaken by a community workshop. See, the way Create works, this right here is a super smelter. I'm not even kidding, no matter how many items I will throw into this little stream of lava particles, they will all be very hastily and very quickly smelted by the lava stream. In exchange, I will not get any experience for it, but I also will not need to spend any fuel, meaning that if I made one of these babies a public resource, I would not have to manage it whatsoever, anyone could use it, take their materials back and leave. And Create has like three or four of these boys, all different, you can smell with lava, you can cook with a campfire, you can haunt with a soul campfire, and you can wash using the water. And not only is that super convenient, it's just one of the many ways in Create where you can craft something. Some items you can only get by deploying items onto other items, some things you can only really craft using automated shaped crafting, which requires the mechanical crafter machine. There are many ways to craft something in Create, and all of them I have onto this convenient clipboard. Because today I decided that I want to put together a community workshop that anyone could use to craft any create components. And seeing how I also myself love to craft things, I will be putting that community co workshop as the ground floor of my own house. So with that let me pinch some andesite alloy from Pigglesworth's farm and we'll get going with my big list of crafting stuff. Seriously, Pigglesworth made this little cave where people can come up and pick up however much of Andesite Alloy they want. This is super kind of him, and it's really cool that he already made an Andesite Alloy farm this early into the series. This is too convenient. I'm gonna miss this in vanilla Minecraft. Okay, first on our long list of crafting thingies is kind of the easiest but also kind of the hardest thing. The mixer. Well, okay, you can't actually make a mixer without a press, but we luckily already have one in the village. So I do have some pressed iron sheets, meaning that I can make a whisk, meaning that I can make then a mixer proper. Actually, let's make just a bunch of basins at once, because these boys will be very, very helpful for us today. My idea is that you're gonna teleport into the town and you're gonna immediately see that this is where you can craft all the materials. In fact, one of the things, Mechanical Crafter specifically, I want to be basically a store window. I want it to be available for people without having to walk into the area. So I'm reserving these one, two, three, four, five by five, I think it is, for the crafter in the future. What the heck am I doing? I can do this instead. So the five by five of the crafter plus the extra area to have like a maybe decorative filler to separate it. Oh dear, this is really putting it into perspective. We will need at least one segment that's as big as this one. So well, one, two, three, four, five. Oh boy, we will need to expand this significantly. I mean, not that that's hard. 
<laughs> building one goes boom. At least this way it actually reaches the water, so if I install like a water wheel... I mean, it will probably work here and like look nice aesthetically. Except this is a lake, so there shouldn't be any water flow whatsoever. Okay, so the mixer is pretty simple, but we definitely will want a second one of these. And uh, the reason we'll want the second one of these is because there's such a thing as heated mixing. It's how you get brass. It's Yeah, we, we definitely need a blaze burner under uh, one of these boxes. And I don't want to get a blaze burner. At least not functioning one, because that requires you to go to the nether. Should I just still silence one? Should I? Is, is, is that a breach of friend code? Okay, new plan. I'm just gonna smash a ton of plates, craft a bunch of these, and then we'll go to the nether once, nether again. Maybe again to grab some soul sand for the hunter machine. Probably will have to do that. I have fire protection one on my pants and speed defect from the thing. I'll be fine. Ah, crap, 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 crap. Going to the box. And thank you very much. Now, which of these tunnels do I take to actually get go home? We have waypoints on the server. We should probably just place one right here. I am speed, baby! <laughs> okay, you go here, wait to be fed. You go here, wait to be powered. Now, on to the smasher thingies. Presses. It's called the press. You think uh, I'd know that, given that I myself am very depressed. Another cool thing I need to address is that uh, you might want a bunch of depots for your workshop like this. Because you see, getting things um, from off of a depot when it was just smashed using a press is pretty easy. It's no problem at all. So that one, that one is safe. But when these things press into a basin or mix into a basin or, you know, heat it mix into a basin, the stuff from the basin will remain in the basin. And when you right click it, you will unfortunately take out both the ingredients and the finished product. And sometimes you just don't want to do that. I personally prefer to only take out the finished product. But luckily you can just install one of the depots right next to it and the basin will output right there. In fact, if you put it like this, you even still get a little bit of a gap to feed the blazy boy. So, yeah, that's quite convenient in my opinion. Also, all of these logs are temporary blocks. I just had a lot of them, which is why I use them. I don't actually want it to be the primary material for the thing. Another problem is that we still need to power this baby somehow. And uh, yeah, all of these things functioning all together already will take a lot of water wheels. And I am insistent on using water wheels because, well, setting up a boiler just doesn't feel like something I want to do right now. It's a lot of hassle. And I'd honestly rather strap a bunch of giant water wheels to uh, a bunch of cogs to speed them up than have to craft a single <laughs> rotational speed controller. Mostly because it requires a precision mechanism, and oh, no, no, not doing this. Yeah, that's a normal amount of water wheels. Only half of our, only half of our mob farm is here. This only powers these four stations, and I also need to still power a fifth one, but I can't really make it because guess what? That one requires brass. So let's test this out. Uh, 18 copper, 18 zinc. And we mix, 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 mix. Oh, I love it. Oh, I, I love it. This this goes so fast and so cool. It's a little bit more evident if you start smashing iron onto the thing because it just goes bonk, bonk, bonk. <laughs> I am so happy. This is so much faster than si uh, Silent's little bracelet that I've been operating out of. Oh, oh my god, I get to show this to Silent. Guys, that's gonna be so exciting. Anyway, uh, our next thing, because we definitely did all this, mixer, press, basin, press, is a deployer. Deployer is now very interesting. Essentially, it's a pokey pokey thing that uh, pokes you with a brass hand, and it requires some brass sheets, which we can now make, but also it requires an electron tube, which is an iron sheet and polished rose quartz. Now, polished rose quartz, 
usually wouldn't be an issue at all. You just go into the nether, grab some rose quartz, come back. But unfortunately, in the mod that we're running, rose quartz does not really spawn in the nether. You only can get it by combining a bunch of redstone with nether quartz. And I do have some nether quartz. And I do have some redstone. Unfortunately, that's really, really not enough. But that's not actually a problem. Because let me let, let me get you, you know, a secret. After, after we're done today, I will never have to go into the nether to grab quartz. <laughs> In the meantime, I definitely need to grab sand to craft sandpaper. Shaka, 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 shaka. See, this is actually exactly the reason why we will need a deployer. A deployer can totally apply sandpaper for you. This display done. I want to now move on to the fans. So fan-based processing in Create, as far as I know, only requires four fans of different kind. We got the Haunter, we got the Lava, we got the Water, we got the Campfire, which is regular cooking. Obviously, these are currently represented by, two, uh, by blocks because it's really hard to hold liquid midair. Now, fans are very interesting in that they actually do not require you to have a high speed on them as far as the processing speed goes. So if we're doing manual processing anyway, we might as well give them the barest minimum and go on with our lives. Oh no, I ran out of the casings. If only I had a machine that can apply underside alloy to stripped wood for me. <laughs> ah, this is so convenient. I love it. And here they are, all four of the fans. Blowing, not very hard to be completely honest, but again, according to Create itself, the speed of the fan doesn't speed up the processing strength whatsoever. And honestly, much as I love seeing all of this in action, I actually have a little bit of a different plan for configuring these fans. I actually think it would be really cool to only have them function when they are uh, using something when there's something they are being that they are processing. So what I want to do is connect some clutches and some comparators together to make it so that only if something is on these depots does the fan atop the thing kick in. Does that actually save on lag on anything else? I don't think so. But it looks cool when you come up to a contraption that doesn't actually do anything, place something down there, and ooh, look, it reacted! <laughs> it just makes the system look and feel so much more smarter than it actually is. And also there is absolutely zero point in haunting uh, Soul Sand. What I wanted is to wash it, because I honestly do not have enough quartz to make three more comparators. It really is like a pretty simple system here with some clutches and some torches and some, you know, no gates. Not a big deal, but lava fan, campfire fan, water fan, haunted fan. Fan based processing is done. This is super cool and super satisfying. Now, next up, we actually have something very, very interesting, and that is the liquid mechanics. There are quite a few things in the game that require liquid to be spouted on it. For example, the water engine for one of the jetpacks, I can remember off the top of my head. And more importantly, if you want to make a sweet roll, you will want a milk spout to milk on top bread. So yeah, this is getting pretty serious if you ask me. Obviously, I want to immediately go and smelt some copper for this project. I want four separate spouts. One connected to a drain, so you can input whatever liquid you really want, because that's how drains work, you can just right-click them with a bucket. And three more with different liquids, water, lava and milk. Because all three of these in Create are infinitely reproducible. And don't get me wrong, so is honey, so is chocolate. I'm not gonna make a chocolate farm, I'm not gonna make a honey farm. Not right now, not here, not for this workshop. Even lava spout is not gonna really work for me, because we don't actually have an infinite lava source right here. And I will definitely be working on some sort of a lava farm for the central heating for the server, but until then, I'm just gonna kinda leave a pipe 
to sticking out, <laughs> if you don't mind. Point is, we need some uh, copper casings. It is very convenient that this episode somehow structures itself in a way where uh, I can use my previous already established contraptions to make the new ones that I'm trying to make. Gee, I wonder if I actually planned it that way, huh? It's almost as if I'm good at this, like, video-making thing. Now, liquid mechanization in Minecraft is annoying, even in vanilla Minecraft, because, you know, redstone and liquid. But here we're hitting a whole new level, where, yeah, there's pipes, there's spouts, and there are pumps, without which nothing is gonna work. So, I have cooked everything up to a single kind of a power source, but I am unfortunately still stuck with no lava source for the lava spout, which is why it's on a uh, firm to-do list uh, currently. As far as everything else goes, obviously we're gonna be able to get the water, because for one, we are near a lake, and for two, two, two source blocks next to each other, create infinite amounts of source blocks, will be fine. And as for milk, well, I happen to know for sure that milk is automatable. Because look at this, the Cheesecake Factory Liara put together absolutely uses milk in its production, and yeah, here's the cow that it's constantly milking. Now, I should be able to uh, just kind of slurp, 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 slurp this part, and uh, give it naturally to one of the... one of the many, many pokers aimed at the cow. And look at that, it milked it! Okay, 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 let's test this. The slowest ever milking machine in Minecraft. Hold the bucket. This finger here is actually set up to only ever accept empty buckets, meaning that as soon as the bucket is not empty, it will fall out of the... Mm -hmm, down here, onto the ejector, back up, and into the hand. Oh my god. All right, cool. Have fun being milked forever, cow. We are so back. We never left. I've been here the entire time. So we now have the milk. And we now have the water spout. Lava will be eventually. And now, if we decide to drop in some other kind of liquid, we can always do this by doing this. And it's gonna up, go directly into the spout. Yeah, it's a little bit of a handful on the back side. We will be definitely decorating all over it. But more importantly, that puts us into the drain spout, water spout, milk spout, all done. And the page one is essentially complete. But most importantly, I can now schedule a stack of bread to be turned into sweet rolls, <laughs> which is just gonna be delightful. There is definitely something alarming about my diet in this game, it's basically relying on pastries and only pastries now. Don't worry, I'll get to even more alarming food later. Is that a is that a burrito? It's a burrito? The visual it does look disgusting though, like I have to admit. This is pretty awful looking. And that brings us nicely to the mechanical crafting. A thing that we can now very easily make, because ultimately it just comes down to raw quartz, and we can make quartz you by... I want to get a 25 by 25 kind of a, a wall of crafters right here. And I don't actually need it to be 25 by 25, but I f it feels right, and it feels very ambitious. I'm pretty sure that the biggest recipe on the entire mod pack is very much just the crusher wheels, and they even don't occupy the entirety of 5x5 five five of, the, of the mechanical cr shaped crafter. So, this is a barbaric overkill. And yet, why not, you know? The reason why not is because it's really hard to orient also. Dang it. It is very important that all of these grey arrows actually point into the where they're supposed to point. Because the way mechanical crafting works is it assembles the item for you. Nice and uniform. And also, like, I gotta admit, that does kinda look good. And with that ticked, all that's left to do is put together the crusher wheels, which are actually super necessary and would be much earlier on this list, except for the fact that I need the mechanical crafter to make the crusher wheels. 
Also, there's like an entire third page of like stuff. That don't don't worry about it. The, the, the third page. The, 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 don't read. If you wanna read, go to the library. This is a YouTube video. Anyhow, let's see if I can make a crusher wheel by memory. So we put together all of this, and if we did everything correctly, then in five to ten business days, uh, maybe we'll get a couple of crusher wheels. Yeah, that's the thing about the Mechanical Crafter, it does take a lot of power, and it does take kind of forever to get put together. I should probably go into the, you know, upside down under the, vo uh, under the thing and try and speed it up, but I'm genuinely afraid of messing with it right now. Mind you, Russian wheels are no different, you absolutely need a ton of power to run them, and... Um, not pretty, I'll tell you that. Boop, a uh, boop. Now, a cool thing I learned about uh, powering the crushing wheels is that you can basically do the whole thing with uh, three cogs of the large variety pretty easily. Like, bam, 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 and there it goes. So now we just need to provide enough speed and rotational energy, rotational stress unit, for these to crush anything that falls into it. And also maybe give myself like a footstool to reach to <laughs> actually be able to throw things into it. We're not gonna do that. We actually are just gonna put together a smart shoot and uh, put a double chest on top of it. I'm, I think that's gonna be like the perfect solution for this. I will need a footstool to, you know, put those things there, mind you. Oh, and here's a completely stupid thing that I don't know how I managed to forget. I just straight up did not include a regular millstone into the list of crafting stations that I need. So I'm just gonna put it around here, just one block behind the actual wheels, and hope against hope that <laughs> none of the things falling from the uh, from the crusher wheels are gonna fall into the millstone. I mean, they're gonna land right here, right in front of us. It's gonna be fine. Add that into the entire thing. There we go, millstone. And now, with the movement of those giant wheels, this checklist is complete. Don't look at the, don't no. The, there is no third page. I am, I refuse. And as far as the workshops go, this is pretty nice. I honestly cannot wait to share this with my server mates. I'm sure they will appreciate it a lot. As long as I make this also a little bit nicer looking, because uh, not having walls or roof does do a lot to a thing. Actually, now that I look at it, uh, it's gonna be such a pain in the butt to remove all of these logs somehow. Oh wait, I know how to get rid of them. See, if I start chopping these down, they will all just like fall into the basement and we don't want that. That's not convenient. Uh, so what I'm gonna do instead is grab my wrench and check this out. Imagine like we have a create component. If I shift right click, it doesn't drop out. It goes directly into my inventory. Meaning that all I need to do is somehow make all of this floor into a create component. <laughs> and that's gonna be pretty simple if I just shave all of the logs and then grab my underside alloy and convert it into that. Blip, 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 blip. I mean, I do need a lot of underside casing anyway, so might as well. Okay, with new floorboards and a little bit more of a solid vision for what I want to do with this room, um, time to finally admit it, uh, there is a third page. <laughs> and that's where all the chipped workbenches are. Now. What is chipped? Chipped is a mod that adds a ton of blocks. 49 pages of just block variants upon block variants. Every single one of the 16 colors of the glass, there is around a dozen or two of also variants of that glass. For every color of wool, there's a giant arrangement of variants as well. This mod is robust and it introduces so many, so many textures of all kind that I am genuinely scared of even getting into it. But if we want this room to be a proper you know, crafting room, then we should absolutely, at the very least, 
put together one of each of the workbenches. Since, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't seem like that much of a hassle, as long as you don't look at the alchemy one. We're like, seriously guys, a brewing stand and an enchanting table? That seems excessively expensive. On the upside, getting all of these workbenches going will mean that I actually have access to a lot of new blocks that will be handy during the building of this, well, building. Though admittedly the recipes for them are fairly trivial. Now this here, oh this is all looking proper modded. Just gotta put a house around it, which we will do in a massive time lapse. Well, not gonna lie, this took a lot out of me today. <laughs> Getting this project done is been, has been quite a difficult thing uh, with how much time I had to dedicate to all the inner workings and all the outer workings. Like, look at this. Dang, that, that should not have been a one episode thing. I, I robbed myself of just like, at least a week worth of content. But now it's all done. And uh, yeah, the, the little pumpkin house that I made is now here with every single crafter that you would need except for the carpenter the frame block one because I only now remember that it exists. Now there's a strong expectation versus reality outlook here uh, between the sketch that I've done and uh, the house that I ultimately made. Trust me, it is the same idea in the same general, I just didn't know the proportions of the inside because I didn't know how many work sessions I'll have to fit. So that's where the kind of um, discombobulation of the original sketch I made is uh, coming in. We will definitely try and make it a little bit nicer to live in because right now let me just give you a tour of the house. Uh, so this is the bedroom. That. That's it. <laughs> Not very impressive, is it? And we do have some furniture mobs, mods in here. I am yet to dip into because I am ultimately a very vanilla player, uh, as it turns out. And I have not quite yet gotten used to just the sheer amount of texture and variation that this mod pack offers. But as far as building goes, this is definitely a very strong start that I'm super proud of. And I'm hoping that you enjoy it as well. And also do tell me in the comments what should be the next thing that we should introduce to the city. And until next time, I'm gonna go take a nap, oh my god.